Hello everyone, I have to do another video comparing, um, you know, budget glass in a higher magnification uh, versus premium glass in a lower magnification. I've been working at this for about almost a year and a half at this point, um, and today I have absolutely come to a definitive, absolute conclusion. Okay, so over here, I got the Primary Arms PLX. Okay, that's a one to eight compact. So this only goes up to eight magnification, but this is Japanese glass versus here, switch hands. This one's the also primary arms. This is SLX, okay? But this goes up to 10 magnification, okay? And if you notice, this one says by 28, okay? So this is a 28 tube, a 28 um, millimeter lens versus the 24 millimeter lens, okay? So, so what, the, what they're doing with the budget scope is they're they're giving you a bigger scope with bigger lenses to make up for the fact that maybe they're using you know you know less than premium glass okay so I've been like kind of fussing this with this for about a year and a half my initial impression when I first started comparing these two scopes was that the uh, um, that the the cheaper scope with the more magnification uh, was was more of a benefit you know when you when you look at this I, I, I did you know I, I think it was a year and a half ago basically I put I put some paper out at 100 yards 110 yards 120 yards put some bullet holes in it and basically I was basically looking at it with one scope looking at it with the other scope and it seemed to me like I could see it better with the 10x but that was at 100 yards so I'm like you know maybe it's just a 100 yard thing maybe if I go out to 500 yards maybe it will appear a little bit differently maybe the maybe the the premium glass will you know i'll shine it and i did that and uh you know i, I now obviously i couldn't see like bullet holes so i'm looking at like structures i'm looking at frames and i'm like yeah you know maybe the the premium one at 500 yards 600 yards maybe that does seem a little bit clear you know i, I put that aside and then a couple i think almost like eight months or almost a year later I brought, I basically, I took the, both scopes off the rifle, right? So I wanted to get out to an area because the other two scope, the other two tests, I did them at gun ranges, right? Um, and I wanted to get away from the gun range and get out into the real world and, and look at things, you know, look at real things and people moving and, you know, and ships out there at distances. Uh, that cargo ship over there, uh, that's actually an oil tanker. That oil tanker is at uh, 1,300 yards. So I wanted to look at that. And I did this test last week um when i initially when i was looking at the ships out there my initial thought was that the 10 magnification was beating the 8 magnification premium glass that was my initial thoughts um and again i was looking at cargo ships i was looking at the lettering on the cargo ships you know out at like whatever like a thousand yards and it seemed to me like the 10x initially was was doing a little bit better uh, initially i gave it to the to the, to the to the cheaper scope with the more magnification but then I started looking like at the far distance at some of the at, at, at the bridges and the far distance over there, like 10 miles away. And like, you know what? I think at, at distance, maybe the, the premium glass, I can see the structures, like the, the bridge frames and the cranes. I can see them a little bit darker. You know, maybe there's more resolution there. That's what it kind of seemed to me like. So I'm like, you know what? At, at 10 miles away, it seems like the Japanese glass is doing better. If you're going to be looking through the scope all day of doing observation, maybe this is the better choice. Okay, so today I came here with a diff, totally different intention. Uh, I was mostly working with the the PLX scope, the premium one, um, and I did a prior video on on leading targets uh, and basically specifically factoring in time of flight. Right, so I was working on that, and I was working on that with this, you know, like for a couple of hours with this uh, with this. PLX premium scope. Okay, so I got you know very comfortable with this. Was using this, uh, and and here's the thing for 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 leading targets, uh, that's when first focal plane really matters. Okay, because what would happen is a lot of times I was I was kind of leading the targets in, in like three power, and then I would have to either zoom in or zoom out. And here's the thing: when you're zooming in and out, you need a focal a first focal plane scope so that the measurements that you take will hold true. Uh, in all in all magnification, right? Because what I was doing is like I was basically timing, you know, as the cars or the boats were, you know, were passing a certain point, I was timing it. But then I would have to zoom in or out, 
so as I was zooming in and out, I needed that to hold true. So for that, first focal plane is like really the only option. Okay, you can do it in, in second focal plane, but you're you, you're stuck at one magnification, and if you need to uh, move to a different magnification, you gotta time it all over again. Okay, that's for the second focal plane. So that's why I was working with the first focal plane. I was doing this for a couple of hours, and then I was about to pack it up, and I'm like, let me um, let me pull out this other scope here, and let me. Take a look at those, you know, take a look out there and see what I see. So I, I have observed that ship out there, that, that oil tanker over there, you know, throughout the day. And uh, I can, uh, you know, it's an oil tanker. You can, I can read it, right, with the eight power premium glass. I can see where it said no smoking in big letters on the on the face of that oil tanker. It says no smoking and underneath it, it says um, uh, safety first, okay? In slightly smaller letters, right? So I have two different size letters. So, so this kind of like going to the eye doctor now. I'm reading an eye chart, and you know, because you got big letters and you got little letters, and you're trying to read the letters, you know. So I was doing that with the eight power premium glass over here. So now I pull out the ten power, right? Uh, ten power, but cheaper quality glass. I put it on that oil tanker, and it is so much easier to read those letters at 1,300 yards with the 10 magnification, regardless of the fact that this might be, you know, uh, less than premium glass. In fact, this scope says made in China, so it's Chinese glass, okay? Uh, so despite, so I'm absolutely decided on this, right? I've, I've been, I've, I've absolutely 100% not second guessing myself anymore. Um, when it comes to seeing at distance, right? Particularly in that 500, you know, in that 300 yard, to like 1500 yard range which is the range that we are likely to be shooting in and doing observation and you know now obviously we're not going to be shooting at like 1300 yards where that ship is over there but we might be doing observation and then closing in and that kind of stuff so at the distance that you're likely to be working in right uh more magnification beats premium glass within between these two uh, primary arm scopes. Now, maybe if you go to a different, you know, to to to, to a different um, uh, name brand, that might be different. It might be different, but we, but within primary arms, right? As far as just being able to do observation at distance and just see what's out there, so that you can hit it. Um, the 10x, 10x cheaper glass beats 8x Japanese glass. No doubt about it absolutely made up my mind okay now like i said the main advantage to the remember this is a, this is a 450 dollars scope so so as far as seeing out there the 450 dollars scope beat the 1500 dollars scope here right so this is the like i said this is the plx m8 okay right so the, the, the 450 dollars scope beat the beat the more expensive scope now part of the the 400 the 1500 dollars is the size you're paying fifteen hundred dollars to also shrink the scope down, right? So it's not just a matter of, you know, getting better glass. It's also a matter of getting a lighter scope. So the the weight differences with the mounts, right? And these are the same mounts, aerial precision. This one comes in at, at uh, one pound uh, five ounces. This one's one pound eight ounces. Okay. So there's a three ounce. So so the the, the more the cheaper scope is three ounces heavier. Okay. So one pound five ounces. One pound eight ounces okay a three ounce difference so that's you know it's also obviously shorter right see how it's shorter it looks like it's shorter by i don't know about uh, an inch and a half right so so you're also you're paying for the for the for the compactness of of this scope uh but as far as my use right where the value that i see in this scope is in leading targets because you're able to go to that that first focal plane and and and, and time the targets that are moving uh, and then basically zoom in, zoom out, and the time that you, the timing that you made, holds true in all, uh, in all magnifications. So that's why I, you know, my choice is the fifteen hundred dollars scope as far as like a scope that, like, a, say, if I, if I could only have one scope, yeah, it would be this fifteen hundred dollars scope because it easily allows me to execute that moving, uh, that 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 shooting, uh, you know, and leading moving targets. Uh, but for most people, right? This this four hundred and fifty dollars scope, this SLX one to ten by twenty eight. Okay, this is going to be a great scope option for you at, at a very good price, and it has it has all the great capabilities in there. Let me show you guys in uh, 
show you guys through the glass. I'm gonna keep it in one power. So with this, it doesn't matter if you're zoomed. Yeah, you're gonna be able to see the reticle. If I can line it up. So you're gonna be able to see the reticle in one power or in 10 power because what happens when I zoom in the reticle size doesn't change okay so you see that spine that goes up and down that, that spine helps you kind of lead you to the center for like fast target acquisition so and you got you got basically in uh, now you have to be in a power when you zoom up to a power those mill lines are great for auto ranging and also you got the auto ranging feature on the side but again you have to be in a power in one power none of that stuff's any good so let me zoom up to a power let me see if I can give you guys an image of this SLX scope. Uh, let me see if we're able to see this because now with the eye box usually gets pretty crappy. Let's see if we can line it up. No, let me see. Right. Right. Cool. Go further out and bring it in. Put on that ship. Okay, well, I got you some bicycles. Let's swing over a little bit. Okay, hold on. I think we found the ship. Now, there's a focus. Like, like when I look through the scope, I can read the, the signs on that ship very clearly. The reason you can't read it is because the camera's not focusing. I go back to three power. Yeah, so the out of focus is because of the camera, because it doesn't know what to look at. It doesn't know whether to look at the glass or it doesn't know to look at the reticle or the ship. So it's not looking at the right thing for focusing. Go up to eight. No, it's one. Uh, ten. Uh, sorry, ten power. My arms are getting tight. Um, I think you were able to kind of read the sign on that ship uh, through the glass that says uh, Bermuda. Uh, but that's that's pretty big. But you, you can actually read much smaller letters on, you know, on the white, you know, further back on the ship uh, with this. So anyway, bottom line is this is an, an excellent, excellent scope um, for people because this scope, if you show up to a class, right, you can pretty much do, you know, like you can do milling, you can do range estimating, you, you know, you can, you, you know, because there's a mill grid in there, you can do wind holes. Um, this scope allows you to do all the advanced stuff that you would be able to do, let's say, on a $1,500 scope because, you know, because you, you have all that information in there. Now, the only thing is, like I said, you, you have to be in, in uh, eight magnification in order for those measurements to mean anything. When you're in one magnification, uh, the only purpose of all that other information is just kind of like guide you to the center, right? So when I was in one power, right? So when you're in one power, yes, yeah, it's, it's so much easier to find the the eye box, you know. So that so that spine kind of basically guides you to the center. All that all that those lines and that stuff. So that's how you, that's that's the only value that that stuff has in one power. Now if you look.
Hey, when I, I started going off into a tangent about um, leading targets with this particular scope, and I think I just want to do a separate video on that. So uh, this video, I just want to let you guys know that if you're on a budget, $450, this SLX 10 Power from Primary Arms, $450, uh, it's going to serve you well. Okay? You will be able to do everything that you can on that $1,500 scope. Uh, the only drawback is with leading targets, leading moving targets, uh, other than that, I mean, I think this is an excellent scope. You're going to see what you need to hit at distance. Okay? Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.